going back as far as uh, the 1970s, there have been academics who have talked about a, a concept of wicked problems. And these are not problems that affect just the greater Boston area. The wicked problems are, thank you, uh, wicked problems are inherently something that have a whole long list of qualifiers, but basically there are, there are problems that we're all familiar with that we've actually heard some folks talk about today that are really hard to solve. So things that, for example, have multiple causes and no easy solution, things that are interconnected, things that require a broad base of people to figure them out. So imagine uh, climate change or the achievement gap or economic inequality. See, all of these things, the thing that, that strings all of them together, is this notion that there's not a silver bullet that solves any one of those things. I am a public policy student at the University of Minnesota Humphrey School, which is the kind of place that we used to send people in order to learn and figure out what the silver bullet to solve these problems is. And so we would send people to somewhere like a public policy school for, for two years, and they would come out and they would be an expert, and they would run a regression, and then they would submit a white paper that all of us would read, and then we would solve a problem and go back to doing Little League Baseball or whatever it is. My contention, however, is that none of these problems are things that we're going to be able to solve that way. It's not going to be that we're going to have an expert on healthcare policy or a regional planning expert who is necessarily able to come up with one thing that is going to solve any of these problems. And so you would be entirely fair in asking, well, how, what do we do then? How do, how do we address any of this? Uh, th this is a downer of a talk from the comedy guy. Obviously, the answer to solving all of these large systemic problems is improv comedy. <laughs> Thank you. It seemed bizarre, but stick with me for a moment here. So in 2011, I co-founded a project called the Theater of Public Policy, which you'll see in a few moments. But at the Theater of Public Policy, what we do is we take a really smart person and bring them up on stage, and I will usually interview them. And then we have this team of amazing improvisers who takes everything that that person says, and they grapple with it in real time on stage through entirely unscripted improv comedy theater. And so they're trying to figure out and work through the really complicated, knotty problems at the same time that the audience is trying to work out some of these complicated, knotty problems. And people ask, oh, well, how, how do you do this? How do you build a cast that can do these things? And I mean, uh, is everyone on your team somebody who went to the Humphrey School or has a degree in one of these issues? And no is the short answer. I'm the only one in our cast who is even in public policy school, and depending on how my midterm goes on Monday, I might be also not a graduate of the Humphrey School someday. So that's not it. But what it is, is that improv reforces us to practice just a handful of really important skills that I think line up very well with wicked problems. So improv is really about, at the heart of it, being able to listen to what somebody else is saying, being able to collaborate and get up on stage with somebody who you have no idea what they're going to say and I have no idea what they're going to say and then all together we build something bigger together than any one of us would have created by ourselves. And it's inherently creative, right? Because we are creating something bigger than any one of ourselves. And those three skills are the skills that I think that we need in order to address a lot of these wicked problems. We need to be able to listen to each other, and we need to be able to collaborate, and we need to be able to be creative in how we approach some of these things. So together, we're going to do an improv exercise, and there was already someone who left for the door. But the rest of you, <laughs> this will be relatively painless. What I need you to do is take a moment, turn and make a group of people with the folks sitting right around you. So five or six people right around you. The, the number isn't that, but you've got to be able to turn and sort of see them and definitely be able to hear them, okay? Ready, set, go. I'm on a timer here, so you all have to be relatively quick about this. So, good. You've made your circle. Good. Uh, hopefully you're, you're having fun. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is, uh, in your circle, you're going to tell a story. However, 
you will each only say one word at a time. So you'll go around the circle and you'll say like, once upon a time there was a blah blah. And you'll keep going around the circle telling the story. Your focus here is not to make the funniest story or the, the most uh, grand story. Uh, your, your goal is to make the story that just sounds like one person talking. All right, makes sense? Don't have time for questions. On your mark, get set, go. Okay, good, yay, give yourselves a round of applause. Good job, hooray. So, you do not have to point this person out. However, did anybody have someone in their circle who at some point uh, did something that, that derailed this? Because it seemed like they had an idea they want, don't, I said don't point them out. The entire front row is pointing at one person. I don't even know how that's possible. So, okay, so that's one thing. Let me do the flip side of this really quick, and maybe there'll be more folks with this one. Did anyone feel as though every single time the story came to them, it was their job to say, the, or, <laughs> but, and, yes, waving hands at me. I love this game. I love this as a metaphor. Not, uh, uh, this is an exercise that we absolutely do as a cast to try and sharpen some of those skills. I mean, obviously, you all had to be listening to each other in order to make this work. You all were collaborating, building something. And I very much promise, if we had done an even more awkward exercise where I had asked you to sit silently and write a story all by yourself, I'm guessing very few of them would have been as interesting or creative as the ones that you just created as groups here. I love this as a metaphor, though, for thinking about how we try and address some of these wicked problems and where we all fit in that. You might have had someone in your circle who was trying to make the story do what they, they wanted it to do, who was going to throw in a word, when the appropriate word for them to say at any particular moment was the or but, and they're like, I'm bored with that, I'm going to say platypus. <laughs> and that doesn't, that doesn't help. That doesn't help the story. That doesn't actually get us to where we need to go. On the other hand, there were probably moments when you or someone in your circle, there was, uh, there was the story came to you and it was behind the door, there was a, and we wanted to know what was behind the door. And if you had said a, the, I guess but would have worked. But, um, but the idea is that we have different moments. And so the key skill in improv, being up on stage with folks, and I think in good public policy uh, work, is not training people to necessarily be the expert who has the solution, but is training people and all of us in how do all of us come together and play the different roles that are necessary in order to address these different, complicated, wicked problems. There's times when we need folks who are going to be able to come together from a wide variety of different strains and different backgrounds and different walks of life. And some of those people, we need to play the role of and or the or but because that is what that sentence, that story needs at that moment and without it, it doesn't go anywhere. On the flip side, there are times when we need someone to be the person who tells us what the next chapter in the story is and the rest of us need to be able to be there to support it. What I'm asking all of you to do is to think not only about what we ask of our public officials or our public leaders and the different roles that they play, but what role do you play? And how do you fit into a story of solving problems and of change? And whether you want to play an and or a but at any particular moment or you're playing the platypus at particular moments, they all fit into this larger narrative, and it's something that will ultimately change the world. And if you don't believe me, please, I ask you, go home, go online, sign up for an improv class, and you will save the world. So thank you all very much. <laughs>